This time around, I want to help you in understanding differencing disks. You need to understand how these things work so you can understand when they're appropriate, and especially on this exam, when you're reading these scenarios and these questions, when will the differencing disk provide whatever they're looking for? So first of all, what is a differencing disk? Well, it's just really another virtual hard disk that has a parent-child relationship. The differencing disk is the child disk that is linked to a parent disk. Now, creating a child disk by specifying the parent disk establishes this parent-child relationship, and this is what creates a differencing disk. So when you tell that you want it to be a child and you point to the parent, you just created a differencing disk. The parent disk becomes the base image. Now, all future changes to that virtual disk that is the parent disk or the base image, any changes you make, you install other software, you apply an update, you do anything like that, those changes are actually written to the child or the differencing disk. And all that differencing disk ever really contains is the different things between that disk and the base image disk or the parent disk. Now, what are the advantages of this? This sounds kind of complex, right? Well, the cool thing here is you can have multiple differencing disks or child disks that can be created and attached to a single base virtual hard disk or a parent. We used to see these all the time, still do, in live training classes. Some administrators don't like them. We'll talk about some disadvantages in a few minutes. And each differencing disk can be configured differently. So I could have a single parent base VHD that you'll hear called the base disk. Then I can have 12 differencing disks and all 12 people could configure their machine however they want to and everything is cool. You can have things like different allocated memory, different software updates, different installed applications, on and on and on. The differencing disk can later, if you would like, can be merged with the parent disk and they kind of all become one again or basically the base disk gets updated with the differences. Now, a differencing disk can also have another differencing disk as a parent disk. So if you're doing testing, you can save considerable disk space and then try updates on different levels of these things and get some pretty cool results out of this. Now, what are some disadvantages of using differencing disks? Well, first, if that base or parent virtual hard disk gets changed, damaged, moved, then all of your differencing disks become unusable because they're no longer attached back to that base image. It's uh, also, uh, you have an inability to grow or shrink the virtual hard disk size. Uh, that can confuse things. Maintenance also becomes an issue. If you have a software update that needs to be applied, you'll have to apply that to each individual differencing drive, not to the base virtual hard disk. So when you got a software update out there like a service pack, it's going to have to go to each individual differencing drive, not to the base. It would have had to anyway, but a lot of administrators get kind of squirrely, another Southern technical term for nervous, about having you know, multiple differencing disks that can all be rendered useless if that base parent gets damaged or changed. Now, obviously, you need to be doing some good backups here and some good disk management. Just wanted to get you up to date and get you comfortable with exactly what a differencing disk is. And now knowing this, and if this is totally brand new to you, again, go read about it, but you should be able to navigate the questions match the functionality with the scenario they're describing and determine whether the differencing disk will solve whatever problem they're having.